Hi everyone, uh, finally a new installment in a series that I hope to make more frequently. used to call this First Time Spins, and now I'm changing it to Vinyl Verdict. And I may go back to the old title or a new title, I, I don't know what the heck to call this yet, so uh, I'm going to be going all over the place with this. So, basically this is a, a series, much like a Vinyl Survivor, that uh, Super West uh, also does on the Vinyl Community. And I just uh, basically listen to some records, and I have a stack of four, five, six, something like that. And then just decide what I think of them based on the first listen. This is first impressions, meaning that, of course, later on, the impressions can be different. Um, let me turn this camera around a little bit here. I have a lot to have space to show the albums. And, um, you know, sometimes first impressions are not the best. We come to either like a record's better with more listens or dislike later on. But this is the initial feeling. Okay, to start with, we're going to go a 2011 album. This is Adele, 21, her second album. And the reason why I even purchased this album in the first place was because uh, I was uh, in the living room and my girlfriend had uh, some show on where Adele was giving a concert. And I heard that song uh, that's on this album and leads it off. Is it the running, uh, rolling in the deep? And I really loved it. I loved the power of her voice. I loved the way she sang it. I thought it was a great song. And I said, wow, that was impressive enough to me to want to own that song. And then to go out and get the album and see what I heard of the rest of it. So I heard of the rest of it. What I think of the rest of it, excuse me. Um... I have some notes here that I wrote on the side because it's been a, a while since I played it. Well, of course, first of all, I love her voice. I love the power in it. Um, I didn't know until I did some research after listening to the album that, you know, she writes her own songs, which is great. That's a big plus to me. And uh, she seems like a real great talent. Um, this is a good album. I enjoyed the album on the first listen. I think it's going to reward even more with future listens. Um, I think the, the opening track... Running in the Deep is the best song on it. Uh, I also found out from my research that she was having problems uh, in a relationship that she was in with uh, a boyfriend and they broke up and there's a lot of, you know, uh, lyrics reflecting that. So I couldn't really get into the lyrics because um, on this first listen, again, I was listening in this room where I have a neighbor and uh, he was home. And it was I was listening to it kind of quietly. So I have to play it again to really get into the actual words. Uh, but I like the overall sound and music and, and the feel of it. Uh, some I could, like, name some of the songs I jotted down, you know, that I liked. I mean, uh, Rumor Has It. Don't you remember? Take it all. I'll be waiting. You know, um, the, basically the whole thing was pretty pretty good. You know, I also think it, it's pretty interesting to consider that I actually went out and like an album, bought an album that uh, is you know fairly new, and um, it just happens to be, of course, to no surprise, uh, in the U.S. the longest top position for an album since 1985, which is about the time I started getting disinterested in music. So just, you know, what does that tell you? I mean, you know, uh, that I actually like an album, and it's a good album. It's said to be a good album. In the U.K., uh, it also was the best-selling album of the 21st century thus far. And the one, and it, and it happens to be the one that appeals to me. Coincidence? Anyway, so I like this album, um, and I know it's going to only get better in future listings. Um, I'm going to cheat a little bit for this one. This is a compact disc, which is not on vinyl yet. It's supposed to be out next month in August. Uh, this is the Monkees' newest album that came out, Good Times. And everybody that, that hears this pretty much agrees that it's a good album. Um... Uh, I only listened to it once in the car. Um, it had a little bit of this and a little bit of that. You've got like a lot of uh, more modern type of artists contributing to this to help out. And you've got Harry Nielsen contributions and uh, some stuff is old. It's like something old, something new, something borrowed, <laughs> something blue. I mean, you actually got uh, Davy Jones, who passed away, making an appearance on this album using an old song. That I found out, I found out had, has appeared elsewhere before in, in, uh, in the monkeys, but I think different mixes and they've added new things for this. I didn't know it had been around previously before this album, but so you get Davey actually making an appearance here, which is good. Some of the songs I liked on the first listen, "You Bring the Summer," my favorite song on here. "You Bring the Summer," 
followed by She Makes Me Laugh. Those are two Mickey Dolan's vocals. I like the song Good Times. Uh, <clears throat> I like uh, I Know What I Know, Mike Nesmith. I like uh, Me and Magdalena. It, it, it's good all the way through. This is this is an actual good listen. And, uh, you know, I don't know if the Monkees are going to make any more albums. We always we always wonder, like, how far these uh, older groups and artists going to go. But if this is to be their last album, they went out really on a high note. This is recommended. And just about everybody finds that unanimous. So, I mean, I, I think that's, that's a good thing. Okay. Um, here's an album that I picked up cheap. Roy Clark, Yesterday When I Was Young, and uh, I picked it up because of the title song. I mean, I don't know anything by Roy Clark. You know, it's funny, I'm a fan of the old uh, television sitcom, The Odd Couple, the one from the 70s. You always got to make sure you say that because they got a new terrible uh, Odd Couple show now that I watched a few episodes from, didn't like it. But uh, the old classic with uh, Tony Randall and Jack Klugman had an episode where Roy Clark... Uh, made a guest appearance and he plays some really amazing guitar on, on in that TV episode and uh, I didn't really I picked up on some good guitar here but not really a, a, as mind-boggling as I expected it to be however just for the title song alone yesterday when I was young this was worth it to me and uh, I listened to the whole album and uh, not much I can say about it except that it was pleasant it was the kind of album that uh, it appealed to me. Nothing stood out other than the title song per se, but everything here was pretty consistently enjoyable. It's kind of background album, something I put on in the background, uh, like when I'm on the computer here and you know doing my thing. Uh, you know, perfectly uh, agreeable, and uh, an album that I'm going to keep in the collection. So it was fun. Okay, um, now we move on to. Oh my, I've got some notes here, so I'm going to. Look at them. I've been getting into Neil Diamond lately, and uh, this was the first Neil Diamond album that I decided to listen to in full. It's Tap Root Manuscript, and uh, I've got to tell you that I really did not like this album. And uh, that's mostly due to side two, which I thought was just abysmal. And I know it's, it, it's going to be uh, different for everybody. You know, some people think it's terrific. I've already got a couple of comments saying that they liked side two. Uh, this, this album opens with a classic, Crackling Rosie. Uh, I love that song. It's one of my all-time favorite Neil Diamond songs. And the reason I picked this album first to listen to, even out of his earlier stuff, which I know is better, the earlier Neil Diamond is, is, is supposedly the best Neil Diamond stuff, uh, I just wanted to wanted to try something a little, little more unpredictable and also uh, my mom and my aunt had this album I remember the cover and Crackman Rosie is just a terrific opener but that's where it ends now I mean side one had kind of you know what I call normal regular songs on it uh, Crackman Rosie is fantastic uh, one of his best. Nothing on this album matched that to, for me. Although I thought that um, the, the song Free Life was okay. Uh, Cold Water Morning I didn't care for too much. Uh, the song called Done Too Soon was okay. And then I did a cover, closing out side one, a, a cover of He Ain't Heavy, He's My Brother, which I thought was really well handled. It's a good song, so it's hard to destroy a good song. And uh, Neil does, does a great job on it. Side two, though, was a real nightmare for me. Uh, I mean, I wasn't prepared for it at all. Uh, you had a child chorus. Um, you had a song called I Am The Lion which is probably one of the worst things I ever heard. I mean, it really mars this album. Side 2 is an African suite, basically. Just a lot of uh, experimentation and uh, African sounds and uh, thunder and sound effects and just not conducive to a good listen. I just didn't like it. Uh, that people have, have explained to me, and I did some research after and found out this is like a, considered like a, an innovator, a precursor to later on Paul Simon's Graceland album and other albums like that, Side 2. But um, I don't like those albums either, so it's not for me. This is an album, though, I'm still going to, strangely enough, keep in the collection, I think, at least for now. And it, uh, the reasons are uh, kind of kind of odd but I like the cover I like the packaging of this album I think it's really cool and uh, it's got Crack and Rosie on it but uh, sound quality I should also mention the, is good on this the, the, the production the sound quality is really sharp uh, I was very impressed with that 
if, if not the content so much but um I, I probably will keep it anyway maybe give it another chance somewhere down the line for now i'm not in a hurry to get rid of it um so i play side one which i'm sure will grow on me a little more okay um here's an album in beat sandy nelson uh sandy nelson i believe is a drummer um uh, it's all instrumental stuff and it's covers of 60 stuff done in you know, instrumental form really enjoyable album uh you can see some of the tracks that are listed on there i mean among my favorites here were uh, the batman theme uh hard day's night just like me uh secret agent man my love not to be confused with the paul mccartney my love but uh the day trip of my world was empty without you secret agent man if i say secret agent man i think i did uh getting old folks but anyway um just an enjoyable ride. I mean, re really, really fun album. So that's no problem keeping that. Now, I've been getting into Nancy Sinatra lately, and I played her Sugar album. And this was a real treat. Another album I enjoyed pretty much all the way through here. Uh, she does a lot of old-time songs, and uh, it says here, she sings Sugar Town and Sweet Soulful Serenades from the old-timey years. Old timey is right, but her voice, is, I love her voice. God, it's just, it's just great, beautiful. Love the way she sings. Sweet Georgia Brown, uh, Oh You Beautiful Doll, uh, Let's Fall in Love, Sugar Town, Button Up Your Overcoat, all kinds of old songs like that. What a cover, huh, guys? You know, I mean, I <laughs> really like that cover. Um, good album. You know, I have a lot more Nancy Sinatra to listen to in my collection. Uh, this was a real joy. Okay, I have Meet the Supremes. I believe this is with a different cover. I mean, um, the original cover, I think it was red, had them sitting on stools. But um, really enjoyed this album, too. It's another one where it's kind of early Supremes, and... What really stands out about it is it's not just Diana Ross on here. You get the other Supremes singing, you know, uh, Florence Ballard, I, I believe, and uh, it's all the vocals sound a little different. If, if you know what you're used to from usual Supremes records, when you when you give this a listen, it's a little, it's different. It uh, there's even one song here called, uh, and I tell you, it's funny because I can't read it because in the back I put the cereal box record in the back, which I bought probably the same day. It's a cutout record. And you can't read it, but there is a song here called Butter. Is it Buttered Popcorn? Is that the name of it? I'm going to take this all out here, and it's probably going to, after I go through all this trouble, it's probably going to be this, the name of it. Yep, Buttered Popcorn, which is supposed to be uh, sexually suggestive. And I, I guess it is. <laughs> but um, and th this album's been a long time. I mean, I, I heard this feels like a couple of months ago now so uh, you know that's why I'm gonna start taking notes too because I do listen to my records but the problem is that by the time I'm ready to do uh, one of these videos I, I don't have it fresh in my mind I just remember liking this being surprised and thinking that for, for a Supremes fan like me this sounds a little different because of the different vocals here and there and uh, another pleasure so that was mostly I think a positive edition of the series and uh, I hope to make more you know it's usually months and months before I get to another one but I'm going to try to play more stuff and more importantly than that remember it write it down and be able to have notes so I can I can prepare another video soon thank you everybody for watching